What's up, everybody? It's been a hot minute since I spoke to y'all. Uh, just been busy with some Blood World-ish um, writing, being in the zone. Next year, I'm gonna have uh, you know some really interesting stuff to show y'all. All right. So, anyway, um, speaking of Fat Man Scoop, let's start it off. <laughs> Fourth Rider Radio, Fat Man Scoop, aka Big Colorado, we're back, and we have in the building with us right now, Cakes Delicious himself. <laughs> Yo, what up, school? What's up with me? What's up with you, Licious? You tell me. What's up with you? A lot of crazy things are being said right now about <laughs> What's up with you, Licious? Is crazy. <laughs> Pause. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. R.I.P. Fat Man Scoop. Um, Scoop, I should say. Sorry. But um, anyway... It's interesting, you know, you come to the boondocks, um, this is an off sort of topic note, but people have to understand, yo, rap is for chosen few. It's not for everybody, man. To be a vocalist in rap, to actually rap, it's, it's for a very select few type of person. You first of all have to be vocally talented. And so the exchange that you see between Gang Salicious and this uh, radio host, both of these guys, Fat Man Scoop and Most Def, have superior voices. Put it this way. If your favorite rapper couldn't, let's say, be a voice actor, right, and uh, of sorts, because it is voice acting, really, when you think about it, um, and if they don't have that presence and they haven't trained their voice to be able to do it, they shouldn't be rapping. This is why when people say, "Yo, told you, how come you don't like, you don't like anyone?" But it's like, yeah, most people who rap are trash. The overwhelming majority of them are trash because they haven't put in the time, the effort. They either never had the voice to begin with. Or, and usually, more, you know, that's one side of it. But much more importantly, they haven't spent the time. Because the people that animate, well, you know, like the voice actors that you see on TV shows and things like that, who are doing cartoons and all that kind of stuff, they train their voices. They don't just show up one day and, like, you know, speak into a microphone. These are people that train. They spend the time. They record thousands and thousands of things, right? So they get their voice to a point where they can inflect certain emotions. And again, I stress this, but you know, when I was saying this 10, 20 years ago, whether it be on forums and things like that, people looked at me like I was crazy. Now I see, of course, your average run of the mill, um, you know, YouTube analyst, hip hop analyst, who, you know, these guys buy my shit, which is fine. You know, at the end of the day, as I've said, you know, I just want the rap game to improve. But the truth of the matter is that voice is everything when you are a rapper voice 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 and i didn't make this up it's just basic common sense i heard it from primo like 20 years ago when he was doing an uh, interview and he said um the number one thing he looks for in a rapper is voice and it clicked i was like yes that's got to be it right so again when you tell me to listen to griselda who are trash vocally <laughs> or you know you tell me that eminem's incredible who's mediocre vocally I already know. I know that that's not a. Those are not artists that are gonna really last in the long run to hip hop seasoned hip hop listeners. Okay. So anyway, but that's aside. This is about Fat Man Scoop. Um, Fat Man Scoop is somebody that I definitely heard. Um, yeah, younger for sure because everyone knows that famous record. Keep moving. You know, what I'm saying that the Be Faithful song. Um, and I think it goes to a larger point that I've always made, that if you're not making me dance in some way as a hip-hop artist, fuck out of here. <laughs> okay? You're whack. You are whack. And that is the truth. Right? Straight up. I don't care whether you're Mob Deep. I don't care if you're Mob Deep. <laughs> Shout out to Havoc. You know, and I love uh, this, this channel, by the way, YouTube channel. I follow this stuff. But, um, you know, whether you're Mob Deep, you're Nas... Your slick Rick, your fat man scoop. If your stuff doesn't make people do something that we're like, yo, this is my shit, right? I'm swaying, I'm dancing outright. If if your stuff can't do that, you are buns, buns. I don't care who you are. It's just the truth of the matter. Anyway, now um, you already know that fat man scoop passed. I have to say that. Um, the way that Fat Man Scoop went out is crazy. And, you know, it's one of those things. That I say this, obviously, with all due respect to him and his family. Um, but I think, in a way, I'm proud of him. In a certain way. And what I mean by that is that, look, 
he went out doing what he loved, right? Like, this is pretty crazy when you think about it. That's wild. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, but again, it's it's one it's a sad laughter in a sense because the truth of the matter is that um, obviously you know Fat Man Scoop was passionate about what he was doing um, and uh, he went out in in that fashion right but you know it's interesting man hip hop I've always said what's in the name I think I did a video on this about how rap names say a lot about who you are and almost are like forging your destiny you know so you have to be very careful um, about what you put out there man what you choose as your rap name what you know what you decide is going to be your persona and things like that because you're going to have to end up living it in, in a lot of ways um and again that's just why rap names tell me so much about an artist without me like when i hear a whack rap name i already know that person has not thought about this shit. um they have not spent time you know really you know thinking about their music as a as a whole right um i know that this is someone that just probably started rapping yesterday or just someone who has no imagination and if your name is uncreative chances are your music is going to be garbage you know it's uh these things kind of go together now um let's see here obviously I, i'm not going to play these songs necessarily because you know copyright's crazy with with all this stuff but um you should already know these are the major songs I would say uh, for those of y'all who may not be familiar with Fat Man Scoop if you're younger. But I mean, this this stuff ran clubs, okay? Um, this song, Be Faithful in particular, ran clubs. I cannot underestimate or understate just how big of a deal it is. Considering that this song, I want to say, came out in like 99 or something like that. I was clubbing to this record in 2002, 2003, 2004. This is crazy, right? Like that's a pretty long time, right? So it was, it was def, and you still hear it. It's not like one of those things. Obviously, you hear it with a certain era now, um, but this was something that was just a go-to, whether it be black clubs, white clubs, mainstream, you know, whatever. It's a go-to. So this is a huge, huge record. Again, I don't know what it did on Billboard. I don't care what it did on Billboard. Those who are in the music industry who are getting paid off this stuff might care. But as a fan, it's not something that I give a shit about. But it's interesting because, again, people pretend like, yo, so-and-so, when, you know, some Drake record is streaming, and I'm not, again, to disrespect Drake or J. Cole, and they make it seem, oh, this record went platinum. It was huge. It's like, no. Like, <laughs> the streaming era is fugazi. There's so many things about the streaming era that fugazi, I don't have time to go into it. But the point is, this was a huge song, and people love this song. Not because they could get clout off it, not because they could share it and monetize it. That's not what this was about. This was just simple, I like this fucking song. I want to party to this shit. I want to play this at my wedding, right? Before social media. But when people actually enjoyed music for what it is, as opposed to now where music is a vehicle for self-promotion. But that's a whole nother thing. So, this song, fantastic, classic. Um, I think, in fact, it's the first time I ever heard the choice is yours i actually thought initially that was part of the song like you have to remember um i always say this but 97 was when i really started listening to rap seriously um so while i heard rap before that it was kind of like more in passing you know i was more listening to my father's music and some of my mom's music right like whether it be james brown and Phila and you know a bunch of stuff my mj of course you know like so other things i would say bon jovi but you know this odd snoop tape would come out or the odd mc hammer or whatever but in 97 is when i really started to listen to rap heavy so pretty much the only time i started to really understand and dig and go pre-1997 was in 2004 when i noticed rap was becoming shit i heard illmatic illmatic blew me the fuck away i was like damn i'm missing out on some really amazing older rap and that's when I really started to dig. So obviously at that point, I heard like the choice is yours. And it blew me away because I was like, oh my God, you mean they took it from here? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is up until 2004, hearing, um, the, you know, Be Faithful, I just thought Engine Engine number nine was the hottest shit. I just thought it was dope. I never had an, any inkling that it was old or it was new. Turns out it was in fact old by the time that uh, Fat Man Scoop made this record. 
And that goes to show you that great music is timeless. There is no such thing as this is old, this is new. Music heads, if you make great music, it's going to last. If you make weak music, it's not going to age well. That's just the simple truth. So this was huge. This always got the ladies on the dance floor. And we liked it. I genuinely liked the song. Is it a song that I listen to at home? No. It's not a song made for that. But it's made for when you're out and about, especially if you're in a place that is more of a, like even like a black crowd, but it's more of maybe at this stage now, people around my age, a little older, you know, um, and you're playing it for an audience. You want people to really kind of get up and have a good time. You're playing this. This, this is going to be in the set. 1,000%. Um, this one, Fat Man Scoob, Crooklyn Clan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I gotta do this. was crazy. I, you know what's interesting? This song was big. Um, I never liked the beat. I loved Fat Man Scoop's part, but then when it went into the, oh no, Timbaland, I just remember like back then being like, what the fuck? <laughs> like what a major energy drop like holy shit but that's just my opinion and i still kind of feel that way um but the the chorus to me is and the you know the music around the chorus is just what makes this song really pop to me and that's fat man scoop and obviously timbaland production um so this is amazing you should listen to this record for sure music make you lose control let's go <laughs> oh my goodness this is classic Classic, classic. Um, again, you had to be there, man. I remember when this came out. Like, um, you know, it's just, those are college days for me, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so this this is a phenomenal record. And it was huge. And this is another song that was absolutely massive. And it crossed the fuck over. Like, mainstream audiences, a.k.a. white audiences. Um, because, you see, there's language. This is something that um, the younger viewers might not understand. But when people say urban, they mean black. Right, because race and music have always been very, very close together. But obviously, at a certain point, it became unfashionable to keep it real about race and talk about race. So they just started t naming things different. So when you hear the word urban, urban just means black, and like you know, Latino, Latina, right? Um, and in mainstream means white. That's what that's what you when you hear song crossing over to the mainstream. That's code for white. Anyway, but the point is that this is a song that definitely. You know, was huge. I think just kind of across the board. Um, definitely heard it in clubs a lot, and uh, phenomenal song. Of course, my favorite part of it is da 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 da. No name, not even. Yes, <laughs> Missy killed that on and on. Love that song. Um, and then lastly, I would say, what else is um, you might want to know about Fat Man? You know, yet again, these are huge, huge songs. So it's not like he has like an album. I, I mean, I wouldn't know. I didn't listen to any of his albums. I don't think he had an album necessarily. But he just had a couple of these songs where they were just huge, um, uh, huge, huge hits and always fun. So I'll get to this actually in a second. Maybe I'll play that a little bit later. But um, let's see here. Obviously, yes. Yeah, you got served intro. Yeah, again, like. You can just make a couple of phenomenal songs that are hype for the party, and you know, you're gonna get your bread. Yeah, anyways, once Timbaland starts, I'm just not really into it. But um, here's something I do actually want to talk about that I think is really interesting about um, Fat Man Scoop, and I want to see if I can find this interview because I was just watching this. Ain't that some shit? Um, and I actually think that this is a must-watch interview if you're interested in Fat Man Scoop. But really, much more importantly, um, I think it was called On the Road. I was just watching this. Yeah. This is a great interview, yo. Um, shout out to Road Podcast. Uh, it's always great when artists do interviews with people who actually know rap, who are heads, like myself. Because the questions, the quality of interview just jumps 3,000%. Right, they ask real questions. Now, I don't know a ton about road podcasts, honestly, but um, from the little that uh, I've seen with this interview, they seem to be DJs, like actual DJs who are around. So they probably are like actual hip hop fans, right? This is not no fake shit. This is not Lex Friedman or some random cat, Adam Twenty Two. That you're just like, obviously, these people don't listen to rap like that, but they got vultured in, right? Now, Fat Man Scoop says a few things. I do want to play some clips. 
um, just to show you, like, give you a little history here, because I'm not going to obviously play all of it, but some things that I think are really important to think about, especially as a rap fan like yourself. So let's start, um, let's see here. I'm a dude from the Bronx, and that is not true. I'm from Harlem, New York. Okay. So, so my man is he's talking Aaron. about. So you were you were on the east and west. And on the east and west. Yeah. So that's how I knew Dame Dash right. from being young from the nine and all that. And then the way that I and I'm going to talk about this right now. The way that I got into the business, like, I was a rapper. Mm -hmm. So now, um, so basically, Fat Man Scoop was talking about how obviously he's from Harlem, and it's interesting because that style, that again, party rock, that's a Dougie Fresh type of thing. So you know, there's a lineage here. And this is, again, why when we talk about being great at rap, you got to understand the lineage. There's no way around it. So, he's talking about how, as a Harlem cat, he hung on the east and west side of Harlem. Um, he knew Dame, Teddy Riley, Cameron. And it's interesting, he was saying that his, his crew of DJs, he used to be a rapper, but his crew of DJs, um, one of them was uh, Sean C., who ended up becoming like a very famous A&R. Um, you can look him up, but he was a very famous A and R um, on Loud, and this is a guy that was involved with Wu Tang, Mob Deep, Pun, like you know, just crazy stuff. Again, real hip hop shit that you love, right? Um, and that his crew of DJs called the X Men eventually evolved into the Executioners, um, who I had no idea. Like DJ Rock Raider, shout out to Rock Raider, rest in peace. But um, I, this is my first time even hearing about that. I didn't realize that um, Executioners came from. Like, I had heard that they came from X-Men, but I didn't realize it was, like, Fat Man Scoop, like, X-Men type shit, which is wild. And, you know, again, someone like Fat Man Scoop, you might not know as much about him or you might not talk about him as much. But I always stress this. There are so many people in hip-hop that have made hip-hop global and have made hip-hop amazing. Some of them are the artists, some of them are behind-the-scenes folks, roadies managers, whatever, right? It's a huge business. It's a huge industry. And that's why you can't just say, oh, only Nas has made this amazing or only Jay has made this amazing. That's how a Stan, an uninformed Stan, thinks and vulture. But the truth is, hip-hop is a thriving, very much, lots of people who have been involved and lots of people have made it great. Now, um, here he says that essentially gives, which I love about this again, the quality of interview, um, he talks about how he was... I was from Harlem. At that time, what the was biggest rapper in Harlem was Dougie Fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because we had put our crew together as like, uh, uh, like a copy of them, we actually wound up getting... Because we were really good, we wound up getting in that Dougie Fresh system. Right. So we knew Chill Well, and Chill Well is the one who took us under the under the wing and taught us everything, and we basically copied our whole shit after Dougie Fresh. And I was the Chill, rapper. Chill Well was Dougie Fresh DJ. Yes, Chill Well was Dougie Fresh's DJ with DJ Barry B. Exactly. So we copied everything that they did. Um, now um, that's a good point. Again, I did mention the Dougie Fresh thing, but um, he also in this interview talks about how initially he was rapping like Rakim. You know, it's interesting, right? You see Fat Man Scoop, right? Like you're. Typical nerd backpacker might have been like, oh, that's not real hip-hop. That's not real hip-hip. <laughs> but again, like, you don't know, right? Um, just because someone isn't bar-heavy doesn't mean that they don't, they've don't. they never had bars or they don't understand bars. We have literally seen this a million times, okay? When Playboy Cardi was first rapping, if you look back to his older videos, not that he was necessarily spitting bars like that, but his style was much wordier, right? And then he evolved and was like, you know what? Maybe... What makes me stand out a little more is I can do the ad libs, or whatever. Look, listen, it worked, and it's like actually, you know, it's it's quite original, and it works for him, and it's stylistically interesting for what he's doing. DMX was much more rock himish in his original style, and then he slowed down in terms of how he's, you know, and sort of emphasizing words more, right, and became the great DMX that we know. So. Again, when I see these young rappers, or whether it be the Griseldas of the world, the backpack rappers, who think that if they cram syllables, even though they ain't saying nothing, but that if by virtue of being a Coogee rap clone, that somehow that's the pinnacle of rapping, it's like, no, it's not. Okay, you're actually, like, not very good, and you're at the beginning of your rap evolution. Because people that, you're looked down, that you look down on, whether it be your Cardis or your Fat Man Scoops, Know everything that you do and can do what you do even better than you. 
Um, but they realize that they don't want to be a Kuji Rap clone. They don't want to be a Rakim clone. Because who the fuck wants to be a clone? You want to be yourself. That's the whole point. Now, um, he makes a really good point here. I want to just ha sort of emphasize the really, really important shit. DJs do your homework if you think I'm lying. Ask Puff. He said, yo, I want to put you in a suit and tie. <laughs> and I want, uh, first I want you to rap hard for the streets. <laughs> then I'm going to put you in a suit and tie and, and let you be for the ladies. <laughs> so, now, this is interesting. Again, Fat Man Scoop has touched, you know, a lot of people in this rap shit. Okay? Um, and he was talking about how before, again, at the time, he wanted to be a rapper. And he met Puff before Biggie was even on. And Puff had this idea. That sort of mafioso suit and tie shit, that was Puff. Right? It's it's interesting. Again, like no matter what you say about Puff, Puff is a visionary. Straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always respected Puff's ear for music and his vision for what it is that he tries to do. You know what I'm saying? That's just a fact of matter. His personal life I could care less about, really, in the grand scheme of things. But you know that having that ear goes a long way right and that and and again it's not and he has an ear to see okay what's the next thing what's the thing that like oh i understand that's going to really work right and puff to have that vision so i do think it's interesting that um <laughs> puff maybe had this idea of going after the even like obese people or borderline obese people and, and knowing that hey you know if rap you know because rap is all about is almost expressing that inner um that inner god right so it would be really attractive to uh, you know even a casual audience where someone who is kind of ordinary on on you know face value or even um, an outcast in terms of doesn't have the look but all of a sudden they transform into this rap god right he probably figured the shit out like a long time ago who did that person Big. wind up becoming? Big, 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 yeah. He had that idea from the beginning, man. Wow. Listen, Biggie wasn't for me. I wasn't supposed to be Notorious B.I.G. But that, that that's just like the heavy D. The heavy yeah, the heavy D, the heavy D, the the heavy D heavy formula. D formula yeah. The heavy D formula. Um, I learned early that although I knew the killers and the real niggas from my hood, I wasn't no killer. So if you rap and you do that, but you're not a killer... Eventually, they're going to test you out in the streets. Yeah, yeah, Facts. <laughs> Say it louder for the youngins in the back. Facts. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know how many rappers have had their shit took in Toronto, Canada? Famous rappers. I'm not going to go into it. Street shit that I happen to know about. And now I'm like, I barely grew up here and I know about some of this shit. Okay. Like, and you're thinking, oh, it's Toronto, you know. They soft out there. There's real niggas everywhere, okay? 50 said this. I don't care where it is. I'm not going to go to some town in Missouri or in Japan, in Osaka or whatever, and act like I'm the toughest dude ever. Now, you're literally asking for your shit to get took. That's a whole fact. And that's why if you are going to rap that shit, you're going to rap that killer shit, you better be willing to stand on that. We've seen this a million times. How many times have we seen this in rap before people get the picture? And that's why, again, with all due respect to some people who have been killed in the nature of this, my sympathy is limited, even when I'm a fan of the rapper. Especially when the rapper's trash. I'm just, I'm just kind of like laughing at that shit because I'm like, you knew what it was, right? Obviously, when it's like you get your talented people, the biggies, the pop smokes, you're like, ah, oh, that's so sad. But at, at one hand, you also got to realize, yo... You put this energy out there. Don't put energy out there that you are not willing to receive. That's just the truth of the matter. You know what I mean? I mean, look. <laughs> what's what's his name? Fame. Ain't he up, right? The classic fucking record, right? He told you this stuff. You're thinking it's all good. You go through a small hood. He didn't even say a big hood. A small hood, right? Goons coming up out the cut, right? For your goods. And they all should. He's saying that's even what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to get robbed. <laughs> You're supposed to get, yeah, your shit's supposed to get yapped. That's what's actually supposed to happen by natural law and destiny. So again, listen and learn, right? You have to be very careful about what you put out there, right? Now, 
This is anyway. Oh, it continues here. Card. So when people see Fat Man Scoop, I don't care if it's a gangster, a killer, a politician, whatever, they all start going like this. That's right. No matter what, Fat Man Scoop, Cook McClan, because I'm known for that. Yes. <laughs> but what if I was the guy who was acting like a gangster? That's why when you have these guys that talk tough going into Cleveland, going into Texas, going into wherever, you got the niggas from that town. It's like, oh, you real? Yeah. Let's see how real you are. <laughs> right. And that's why you have that. But anyway, so that happened. Didn't work. I right. didn't. I knew in my heart that I couldn't do it. Right. So I came back to. We came back months later, maybe two months later, with a different demo. Now I'm getting into my real shit, what I really feel in my heart. Sounded like De La Soul, some experimental shit. Puff yeah. said to me. Hey, what the fuck is this, man? <laughs> the fuck is this that you giving me, man? <laughs> he said, I can't do nothing with this. I said, yo, Puff, I don't feel the tough shit in my heart, man. I just don't feel it. I said, listen, how about I do something else? And then he, okay, and this part, then he goes into, you know, basically abandoning rap, quote unquote, in terms of like as a rapper. But then he's like, now I'm going to work behind the scenes and actually just be involved. Because, again, this is another thing with hip-hop. If you love hip-hop, just, you just want to be involved, right? I mean, he's talking about, like, working in the mailroom and all that kind of shit. You just want to be around the shit, right? Like, I mean, unfortunately for me, you know, growing up in the Middle East, I, I just wasn't able to be around it like that. But best believe, had I grown up here, I would have absolutely been involved, right? I, whatever it is. Like, oh, y'all want me to get coffee for this person? I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Because if you love the art form, you just want to be in it, right? So, his point, and I think this is really important, you have to do what's in your heart. I was talking to, uh, it's like an underground, you know, aspiring rapper the other day, a lady actually, a young, young uh, rapper. Um, but the point is, and I kept telling her, like, you gotta, hey, you gotta study, number one. But that's, you know, this whole thing, I don't even listen to rap, or it's too old, like, Instantly, I know you're an idiot. I don't have time for you. You got to do your homework. Okay, so that's number one. But you really do have to do what's in your heart. That's what's going to make you work, right? And that's because rap doesn't really... Like, you can pretend in rap, and it can work. I'm not saying that it won't work. It can absolutely work. You can... But it's momentary. The people that, like, really, if you're looking at legendary, longevity kind of status, they're not pretending. Those people are doing what's really in their heart, in the grand scheme of things. And they're making great music. And that's why they have the longevity, because it's real, and it comes from a real place, and they're expressing that reality in a great way. Um, another thing I wanted to point out here is, let's see, he makes a really good point about, I love this in, in VR, you can probably life, tell, shout out to them who did it. It was fucking basura. <laughs> it was <laughs> fucking... He's talking about how his demo... Uh, was was garbage, but anyway, <laughs> it was fucking terrible. He said he wanted. He said he would give ten thousand for the for the demo. I would give fifty for that. Damn, I would give fifty for someone. You know, and I have to say again, you can't fake charisma. You either got it or you don't. And rap is a charisma game. It's a beat driven genre, and it's a charisma driven genre. One hundred percent. When they had that demo, what was going on? Demo? What were you doing? I on just the demo? didn't. I have listened to Let Me Clear My Throat by DJ, DJ Cool. Yeah. Who Let Me Clear My Throat. Uh, 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 oh! I used to love, love this song. I used to love this song. When this shit came out, I don't even know what year that was. It feels like it came out in 97, but I could be wrong. DJ Cool, Let Me Clear My Throat. And then I heard nothing else from this guy. 96. Ah! Oh, love this goddamn record. Like, it was, and in fact, it's interesting, because it's, it's some James Brown shit, in a way, really. Um, but when he mentioned that, I was like, yeah, man, that's right. DJ Cool was that, like, it was, again, in that sort of Dougie Fresh thing, but it was almost like when, when you hear Fat Man Scoop, he is kind of doing that. Um, and... You know, DJ Cool didn't do much after for whatever reason. I mean, he was on a red man. Let's get dirty. Da -da 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 -da. That shit was fire too. But my point is that um, I love that Fat Man Scoop is giving it up and saying, yes, like that's somebody. I heard that shit and that's when I was like, yes, Fat Man Scoop was born. Right. And again, you have to study greatness. Don't study the whack shit. You have to look and say, okay, what is artistically great here? And study that shit. And what really, really speaks to you. 
right? And do and then, you know, figure out your version. And he literally says in here, when you watch it, he's like, Look, I wasn't trying to be DJ Cool, even though like as soon as I saw it and I heard it, I was like, This is me. But again, it's this is me, but I'm gonna do something a little different. Right? That's where you have the great shit. It's not just, oh, this is me. I'm just going to do locks. I hear locks, so I'm going to do locks. No. You hear locks, I'm going to express myself. I mean, I'm going to take the aspects of the locks that I love, and I'm going to channel it in a different direction. That's what you're supposed to do. Right? But to do that, you got to study. You know what I'm saying? And again, like, you know, if you don't study, you're just going to be a, a goofball that gets forgotten. Right? Like... You know, how you going <laughs> how you going to say you don't listen to some shit but then turn around and talk about how you a legend niggas hating on you cuz you know, we don't give you that legendary status, you know, status like you're a goofball. Be quiet. Okay? You just you're another clown that's going to be forgotten, right? Now, um uh, two two more parts of this interview because again, it's a 3-hour interview. It's mad long. Uh you can kind of watch it on your own time. But there's a couple of things here that I want to mention and point out that he that I was like, yeah, Again, behind the scenes shit that people really should know about. He said, you know something? I'm Here he's talking about his brother, okay? Again, Fat Man Scoop is very connected because he ended up working in radio and that's, again, yeah, you know, he goes into all that. But he was saying that his brother, essentially, um, ended up entering in the music industry with him as well. And that his brother uh, got a job working with Maybach Music. Like, well, his brother actually was I think working at like RZA's label, RZA, Razor Sharp, and was kind of in the business as well. And then eventually um, befriended Rick Ross, right when Rick Ross came on the scene. I want to be my own man. I got him an internship at Razor Sharp Records with, with RZA. He left there, he went to TVT with um, Theo, right? He went there, he did the internship, got a call from Def Jam. Him and Steve Carlos got hired at the same time mm. to become the promo department. They became the promo department. He befriended a guy named Rick Ross who had a record called Hustling. Shit. They fucking got, had a great relationship, loved each other. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm starting something called Maybach Music. I want you to be the president of Maybach Fuck. Music. Wow. So my Shit. brother's name is Young Sav. I don't know if any of you guys know him, but his name is Young Sav. That's now, uh, he did that for years. Ross doesn't have a situation anymore yet. So that kind of went to the side. He has his own artist named Flip De Niro. Now, see, Flip De Niro, another respectfully whack rapper. But, <laughs> so you have the cop, and you have Flip De Niro. Now, again, every whack nigga that's in the game that has some sort of buzz, quote-unquote, that has some sort of magazine write-up or, um, you know, interview or whatever, they have people behind them that have been in the business for a long time. Okay. There's these are not randoms, okay. And this is something that again, this is why I don't trust cosigns. And I don't care who cosigns you, right? Because all of this stuff is industry shit at the end of the day, okay. This is why when Rick Ross gets a Nas cosign or does a record and gets a Jay Z cosign, it's like, yeah, your man who is you know the record like Fat Man Scoop's brother. Right, who probably knows Nas, or at least can get on the phone with Nas's with Jungle, for example, or with some people, and say, "Hey, you know, I got an artist. I need him. You know, we need a, you know, the cosign, blah blah." The dude could be trash. You know how many trash rappers that Nas has worked with? There's a few of them. Not a ton, though. I will give Nas credit for that. You know, but he's certainly worked with trash producers and trash rappers before. That's nothing new. And you look at all these guys, Jay, whatever. It is what it is. It's the nature of the business. Sometimes it's genuine. Um, sometimes it's not. A lot of times it's not. So that's why I don't care about cosigns. And again, I said this in a previous video that I did, uh, you know, referencing Crazy Legs. But again, you can't listen to somebody who's in the industry talk about people that they like because they are coming with an agenda. And you'd have to be stupid to not realize the agenda, right? Now, if they say, look, listen, I have an agenda... And they're willing to actually, I would say, talk about it on some, like, you know, in a rational way. Then maybe, and, and actually go into it um, with some pushback. Then I would, okay, maybe listen to what they think and what their opinion is. But in general, I'm just go, oh, okay, whatever. That's your friend. Okay, you're supposed to say that. Fine, cool. But I, I don't care. And uh, lastly, um, this one is very, very important because he was talking about how 
the record took off the Be Faithful, which he's most known for, um, because of the fact that he had this, again, that sort of runaround um, uh, sort of story into getting into hip-hop, or I should say into the hip-hop industry. It ended up paying off for him. Instrumental in getting that record out to the DJs and Bro, getting that out to the public. Here's, 100%. The, here's the facts. Yeah, That record would have been cool. It would have been... The Fat Man Scoop records would have been good if they did them. They would have been solid records. Yeah. But when you know every DJ in every market that is yeah. the difference maker, that is the flex, the friends and Wong, the fucking Big Vaughn, the mm-hmm. Big Boy, the fucking LA Leakers, when you know every DJ. That's right. And they fuck with you. And they play in this. That's what made it happen. But I want to say this. That is what gets it on the air. The real reason that those records go is because of you guys. That's true. Yeah. It's the guys that nobody knows. The guys that do the wedding. The guys that do the fucking bar mitzvah. The guys that DJ at, with fifty people in the room. Mm-hmm. The guys that are over here. The guys on the fucking uh, on the fucking cruise boat. The guys here. The guys. That, it still works. It's still right. to this day. But, yeah. that, but 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 that's the flexes and the franzins and the. And the and the and the LA leakers and the and the DJ AOs mm-hmm. and, and, and the DJ MVs, they make the record out there. Yeah. But the little guys that you don't see, that's the fucking army. Yeah. So you guys made this happen. We got it out there, but you made it happen. And that's 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 a fact. That is a fact. Um and again, I think that this is when I say the difference between Previous era and now, because back then, yes, your college radios or if you're at a wedding or something, people just played the songs because they enjoyed them. There was no, again, it's a very different time now where someone will play something because that's what's buzzing and it's like, I can monetize that and I can get cloud and show it to my friends. Like, that's, it's, it's very different, right? It's super, super different, man. Um, but I agree with him. And again, this is why I say that when you're in the business, it's a whole different ball game, right? It's a whole different ball game when you have relationships. There's so much of this business that is relationships, right? And that's why going back to my point, I keep telling you I could care less what a dude wants to co-sign, okay? I listen to the music for what it is. If I think it's trash, I think it's trash. It's just me personally. It's not who told me it was ill, none of that shit. And when someone says, yo, but so-and-so said it was ill, that's a person that can't think for themselves, honestly. And it's probably not a hip-hop fan like that. Or it's just the the scaredy cat type, Um, you know, and that's okay. But, you know, the great music and the great art are made by people who are real and aren't afraid. That's just a fact of the matter. Now... To round this off, obviously, for those of y'all might know, this was a little intro. <laughs> uh, Fat Man Scoop had an intro on a Doom project back in the day. Um, and again, why I say this is that it's all connected, okay? Like, Fat Man Scoop is a big fan of MF Doom. MF Doom probably listened to some Fat Man Scoop and liked at least some of those songs, right? Because ultimately, you know, hip-hop is is a big family, right, in a sense. Um And I'm talking about a musical family, right? That's what's something I I try to really stress. A lot of times, people have become very siloed. They only listen to a certain type of rap and then think that that's the best rap. But it's like when you only listen to a certain type of hip-hop, in a sense, you know, you only like us, like, wordy rappers that do this, then you're not a rap fan. You're just a fan of that particular style, right? You're a fan of a couple of people. But hip-hop really is a giant family. And dope is dope. And that's why we say it's all connected. Because the Fat Man Scoops of the world, yeah, they might be just doing the Hype Man shit, but they are listening to Nas, the Jays, the Jada Kisses, and all the bar shit. Heavy. Right? And drawing inspiration for that to make their club records. Just as the Nas's and and them of the world are listening to whatever's out. The Dana Danes, the Fat Man Scoops, the Dougie Freshes. And I did the club records and drawing inspiration for that. And that's why when you're dope, you're dope, right? Because, again, we like artists that have layers to them, that have aspects to them. And that's kind of the point. Each other feeds each each other. So when people talk about, oh, you know, uh, Griselda, at least it's not that mumble rap trash. Well, the truth of the matter is that the people that are mumbling, right, they're not listening to Griselda necessarily. But a lot of times, like, the point is that there's a disconnect there. 
And even if there was a connection, it's a connection of trash, right? A mumble rapper might be might listen to Griselda. And then Griselda, I know for a fact, or I wouldn't say I know for a fact, but I'm very certain that Griselda and them listen to mumble rappers because they're always talking about, yo, we not rumble rappers. And we don't dress like Lil Uzi Vert. And it's like, well, why are you even talking about Lil Uzi Vert? Is it because you listen to him? Right? Again, trash feeds trash. So that's why it's important to know your shit and to love this rap shit for what it really is. On that note, I will say peace. Rest in peace to Fat Man Scoop. Definitely watch the rest of that interview because it's very good. And as always, stay loving hip-hop. Peace and love, y'all. One.